Jell-O family present... Henry! Henry Aldrich! Come here, Mother. Yes, it's the Aldrich family based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. And yes, it's the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca puddings. Yes, a And now for the Aldrich family. Very thin. And then Penrod, and now Henry Aldrich. And Henry has a bounce all his own. The scene opens at the Aldrich breakfast table. More coffee, Sam? Thank you, Alice. What do you suppose got into Henry this morning? Got into him in what way? Oh, well, my goodness, didn't you hear him in the bathroom? He was brushing his teeth and whistling at the top of his lungs. Alice, that can't be done. Well, there he was doing it. It sounded like that piece from Rigoletto. All four parts? No, Sam, it's too early in the morning for jokes. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Good morning Father. Good morning, dear. How, how do you feel? Boy, wonderful. Pass the cereal, please. You're going to eat cereal voluntarily? Oh, sure, Mother. If there's one thing I feel like this morning, it's grape nuts. Dear, stick out your tongue. My tongue? No, Alice. <laughs> Henry, is it necessary for you to be in quite such good spirits? You're worrying your mother. Well, I was going to save it for a surprise, but what's the best news in the world I could give both of you? You've discovered oil and I can retire. Father! Henry, you passed your history exam. Passed it, Mother. I got the highest mark in the class. Sam, did you hear that? I think I did, but I'd like to hear it again. <laughs> the highest, Henry? Sure. Well, that's fine, son. The highest, Mark. Imagine my son. Well, that's not the good news. I'm going to be the regular shortstop on the baseball team. What? That's nice. Congratulations, Henry. Thanks, Mother. Only try to be careful when the other boys tackle you. Ta <laughs> Mother! <laughs> well, Henry, shortstop, eh? Yes, sir. First thing, eh? First thing. Well... Well, well, well. When did Coach Nelson tell you, Henry? Tell me what? That you were the first string shortstop. Why, uh, he didn't exactly tell me in so many words, Father. No? Well, not in so many words. Well, what did he tell you? Well, Father, I didn't have to be told. It's obvious. Sam, let him finish his breakfast. He'll be late for school. In a moment, Alice. Henry, would you mind telling me how it is obvious? Father, do you remember Steve Armstrong? Wasn't he the regular shortstop last season? Sure, that's just it. He's not around this year. He had a fortunate accident. Accident? Sure, he graduated. <laughs> then Tommy Dixon moved to Abbott City, and that just left Willie Marshall and me. And you're that much better than Willie? No, but he flunked his history exam, and so he's ineligible. So don't you think, don't you think I'm a pushover? No, suppose some boy you don't even know about shows up at practice and takes shortstop away from you. Father, you're talking just like a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Sam, if Henry feels confident, he's a pushover. Alice, he's just counting his chickens before they're hatched. But gee whiz, they even gave me a uniform. That's how set I am. You had a uniform last year. Sure, but this one fits. <laughs> it's even got a number on it. She was last year. They wouldn't let anyone know who I was. Sam, the evidence certainly sounds very convincing. Alice, I'm not saying Henry won't be the shortstop. I just think he ought to keep quiet about it until he's certain. But, Father... Then, Henry, there'll be no chance of your making a fool of yourself. Hey, Henry! Oh, she was... Is that Homer already? I had the same reaction. I'll be right with you, Homer. Henry, your breakfast! Mother, I finished all but a few grape nuts, and I'll crunch them on the way to school. Hi, Homer. Henry, hurry up. We're going to be late. What are you eating? My, my breakfast. Yeah? Did I ever mention I'm crazy about grape nuts? Homer, I need my strength. Well, do you mind if I hold my palm under and catch what falls? <laughs> What are you going to do with that glove? This glove? This baseball glove? Yeah. Oh, nothing, Homer, nothing. Oh, let's cross the street. Henry, are you trying out for the team again? Trying out? Homer, if you only knew. Knew what? Uh, nothing, Homer. 
And quit trying to make me make a fool of myself. Can I tell me? No. Please. No. But it'll be on my mind all day. I have enough trouble concentrating on my curriculum. Well, Homer, <laughs> can you keep your mouth shut? You know me, Henry. That's what I mean. Can you keep your mouth shut? Scouts on. Well, look, I'll tell you this and no more. Did you know Steve Armstrong is out of school? Sure. The lucky dog graduated. Well, did you also know Tommy Dixon moved to Abbey City? Yeah. And did you know Willie Marshall flunked history and is ineligible? Henry, you mean you're the new shortstop? Now, Homer, stop putting words into my mouth. <laughs> people twist innocent little statements around. All I said to Toby was that when he takes the official pictures of the team, I'd like an enlargement of shortstop to give them to my mother on her birthday. Oh, then it isn't true. Well, all I can tell you, Kathleen, is that at the end of the season, I may have a little something for your charm bracelet. My charm bracelet? Henry, it isn't gold, is it? Why, it might be. And Rob? Well, I... Now, Kathleen, I didn't mention anything specifically. Okay, all you infielders over here. Oh, oh boy, that's Coach Nelson. I have to go now, Kathleen. Oh, of course, Henry. My goodness, Geraldine, wait for me. All right. Were you calling I, Coach? Yes, get out there short. I'm going to hit some grounders for fielding practice. Sure thing, Coach. How about for the old pepper, boys? Come on. Oh, come on, everybody. Let's go, gang. Give me old pepper, the old pepper, old boy, old boy, old boy. you to think I'm making excuses, Coach, but you see this glove? What's wrong with it? I'm glad you asked. Gee was my father used it to rip barbed wire off the backyard fence. I see. But I'm planning on taking it to the shoemakers right after we're through. And maybe you better do it now. You're excused for the rest of practice. Okay, everybody, over the sliding pit. Thanks, Coach, and you'll see a big difference tomorrow. Hi, Henry! Gee whiz, Agnes! Oh, I can't, am I proud of you? Am I proud? You shake. Agnes, quit. That's my throwing hand. Say, you won't be getting two gold baseballs, will you? Well, gee whiz. Did Kathleen tell you about that? No, Margot Hammersmith. Well, how could she? I don't even know her. Sure, but she punted out of Geraldine Love who punted out of Kathleen. Boy, where's Kathleen now? Oh, we're being pumped by Nancy Adams. <laughs> so when you get two gold baseballs, you won't forget your old pal. Agnes, will you? Oh, listen, Agnes, I'll thank you not to go counting any chickens. Well, when did I do that? You know darn well. The next thing you know, it'll be all over school, and there I'll be making a fool of myself. Listen, kid, you don't have to worry about me. I can keep a secret as well as the next guy. Hey, Charlie, wait till I tell you! Good morning, Mr. Bradley. Oh, yes. Come in, Mr. Nelson. You wanted to see me? Yes, I did, Mr. Bradley. If it's about new equipment for your baseball team, Mr. Nelson, I must warn you that the entire school is on a very strict budget this year. Budget? But, Mr. Bradley, uh, frankly, I... the number of broken bats we had last year when balanced against the results achieved was quite out of proportion. Uh, quite out of proportion. Well, I'm aware of that, Mr. Bradley, and that isn't the reason I'm here. Uh, it's about Willie Marshall. Willie? Yes. We've been practicing for nearly a week now, and... Well, couldn't you ask Miss Eggleston to let him take a makeup exam? Well, no, I'm not sure I could do a thing like that, Mr. Nelson. Well, Mr. Bradley, he's our best shortstop. We're not here to play baseball, Mr. Nelson. The boy is expected to have scholastic standing as well. I know that. And that's one thing Willie seems to have very little uh, of. Well, hey, but our first game is this coming Friday. And if I can't get Willie, I'll have to use Henry Aldrich at shortstop. Henry? Yes. At shortstop? Yes. 
time, huh? He tries hard enough, but he just isn't up to it. So if you could put a little pressure on Miss Eggleston. Uh, Mr. Nelson, I'm afraid this is a matter for Miss Eggleston to decide for herself. Oh. Well, I tried. I'd better get back to my chemistry class. Yes, you'd better. I hope it's still there. When I left, Homer Brown was trying to make synthetic rubber. Homer? Hurry, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> and would you ask Miss Shea to step in here, please? Uh, Miss Shea, Mr. Bradley would like to see you. Yes, Mr. Bradley. Would you send a note to Miss Eggleston? Say I'd like to see her when she's free. Yes, Mr. Bradley. Tell her it's about that series of slides on the War of 1812 she's been asking for. But, Mr. Bradley, I thought you decided we couldn't afford those. I know, Miss Shea, but it certainly won't hurt to discuss the matter. <laughs> Mr. Aldridge. Uh, good morning. Uh, has, uh, uh, has that new golf bag I ordered arrived? Why, no, Mr. Aldridge. I told you it probably wouldn't be in until the end of the month. Mm, that's right, you did. I'll call you when it arrives. Good. Good. Say, as long as I'm here, um, what have you in the way of baseball gloves? Baseball gloves? I'm not in the market for one yet, you understand, but it can't hurt the price what you have. Well, the glove you have in mind isn't in stock right now. Uh, the one made especially for shortstop. Shortstop? Yes. Isn't that the position Henry plays on the team? Uh, yes. Uh, that is, no, uh, that is, how did you... Well, you see, we're not at all sure yet. No? Well, I heard from a number of people that he's all set. You have? Yes. As a matter of fact, I was discussing it just yesterday with Walter Trumbull. And he lives at Mrs. Tompkins, you know. So what does that to do with... Mrs. Tompkins' brother is janitor down at the school. So it's right from the horse's mouth, you might say. Well, well, is that so? Yes. Well, I'll tell you, as long as I'm here, I might as well get that glove after all. I'll have to order it from Chicago. You'll have it in a week. A week? But the first game is Friday. Call Chicago and tell them to rush it out airmail. But, Mr. Aldrich, it'll cost... I'll pay the additional charges. We can't have the first string shortstop playing in a ripped glove. Come in. Hi, Coach. You wanted to see me? Oh, yes, Henry. Come in. Thanks, Coach. Uh, did I mention all your worries are over? They are? Sure. Boy, I'm getting a glove that's so foolproof, they practically refund your money if you make an error with it. Fine, Henry, fine. Uh, Henry, the reason I called you in... Uh, yes, Coach? The reason I called you in... Henry, you know what I admire about you most? What, Coach? Your spirit. Yes, sir, coming out for the team year after year, never getting discouraged. You know what that proves to me? What? But you realize it isn't only the man in the pitcher's mound is important. Oh, gee whiz, sure. The shortstop's pretty important, too. Of course, but the man behind the scenes is sometimes just as valuable. He is? That's why I feel I can give you a job like this. Because you'll realize that tutoring Willie is as important as being out there on the field yourself. What? Henry, Miss Eggleston has agreed to give Willie a makeup exam tomorrow. But, Coach, I... So what do you say, Henry? I know you can help him. You've got the highest marks in the class on that exam. Why, uh... Coach, uh, could I sort of get something straightened out in my mind first? Sure, Henry. Well, if Willie passes, he'll play shortstop in the game tomorrow, won't he? Why, yes. But you'll be the one who made it possible. Oh. So, Henry, will you do it? Why, uh... Sure. Henry, I'd like to shake your hand. Sure, Coach. Shake. 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 Yes, sir, you've really got the kind of spirit I admire. <laughs> Gee whiz, that's okay, Coach. I'm always glad to do what I can for the team. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That Jell-O yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings, yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tap, be of the pudding chapstery. Yes, there are desserts for everybody's family in the Jell-O family of yum-yum desserts. Like those swell Jell-O tapioca puddings. A miracle of goodness, a marvel of speed. And Jell-O tapioca puddings are ready prepared. All you do is add milk and cook for about five minutes. There's Jell-O vanilla tapioca, luscious, light, and mellow. Jell-O chocolate tapioca, rich and candy good. Jell-O orange coconut tapioca, tangy orange blended with tropical coconut. And you know that name, Jell-O, is a trademark. It's the property of General Foods, and it tells you you're getting a genuine Jell-O product. And remember, more people buy Jell-O puddings than any other prepared puddings in the world. And now getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. 
Murray has been so confident he was going to make shortstop on the baseball team that he spread the rumor all over school. Then, Coach Nelson asked him to help Willie Marshall pass a makeup exam which would enable Willie to play shortstop. The scene opens in the Aldrich living room. It is after dinner. Mother, is father very upset? No, dear. He just got a walk in the fresh air. Am I doing good? Ah. Uh, but in the future, Henry, when you have news like that to tell him, why not wait until after dinner? Hey, Henry. Dear, when Willie comes, I put a bowl, bowl of fruit in the living room. Hi, Hen, old timer. Here, I brought something to cheer you up. What is it? Bubble gum. I made it in chemistry. <laughs> really going to go through with helping Willie, are you? Homer, I promised the coach. You'll be cutting your own throat. I know, but Besides, I... Besides, Willie's too dumb to teach anything to. Willie? Sure. Dumb? Homer, have you ever tried to do business with him? I know, Henry, I know, but when it comes to history, he comes apart at the seams. She was the only thing Miss Eggleston's ever been able to make him understand is a Louisiana purchase. That's true. And she's a professional. <laughs> Homer, you're right. If it would, well, if it would do Willie any good, I'd be glad to make the sacrifice. Hey, but... Henry! Here he is, Hen. Tell him you're not going to do it. Hiya, fellas. Well, here I am, Hen. Uh, uh, look, Willie. Boy, I sure appreciate what you're doing for me, Henry. Uh, uh, Willie, I've been thinking the whole thing over, and I've decided... Well, it isn't that you're hopeless, you understand. Henry, please answer the phone. When I'm just about to break the news to Willie? Hopeless about what, Henry? Dear, please answer it. I'm busy. Henry? Uh, wait here, Willie. What am I hopeless about, Homer? You'll find out. Hello? Hi, Ham. This is Toby Smith. Hi. Do you have a picture of yourself for the school paper? Of me? Yeah, we're going to run a story on how you're sacrificing yourself for the good of the school. Well, uh, Toby, uh, about that... Boy, a lot of kids in the school have changed their entire conception of your character. They have, but... but... So bring a picture to school tomorrow, will you? So long, Ham. But, Toby... Oh, boy. Henry... Is it all right to let Willie have an apple, considering you're throwing him out in a few minutes? Homer, I can't throw him out now. I've got to try to help him pass. Are you crazy? Well, if I don't, I won't be able to show my face around school again. But if you do, you won't play shortstop. I know, Homer. That's the spot I'm in. Willie! You're calling me, Henry? You're going to tell me why I'm not hopeless? <laughs> Willie, forget about that. Uh, where's your book? We've got to start studying. There it is. Willie, what did you have the most trouble with on the exam? The date. When a number's not in dollars and cents, I just can't keep it in my head. Miss Eggleston will probably ask me all about dates. Well, let's start with the date then. Um, when was the Constitution put into force? The Constitution? Yeah. You want the day and the month or just the year? The year, Willie, the year. <laughs> oh, let's, let's see now. It wasn't 1776, I know that. That was the 4th of July. <laughs> oh, Willie, are you dumb? Is that so? I can name the president on every piece of money we've got. Can you? Willie, I've got to get you to remember. Uh, look. The Constitution was signed in 1789, but don't think of it as 1789. Just think of it as uh, $17.89. Yeah? Sure. Like you were buying a jacket, see? Oh. What kind of a jacket? <laughs> what kind? Well, is it wool or cotton or what? What difference does that make? Listen, Homer, I'm not paying $18.89 for a jacket I don't know anything about. <laughs> Forget about the jacket and see if you can remember this. The Constitution, it was signed in 1789. Say that rhyme. Sure. Now, when was the Constitution signed? The Constitution, it was signed in 1789. Hey, give me another, Hen. Give me another. <laughs> William Marshall, you may come in now. Oh, thank you, Miss Eggleston. And I don't want to rush you, but did I mention the game starts in half an hour? I'm aware of that, William. Now, let's get right to the exam, shall we? Uh, yes, Miss Eggleston. And I want to say I certainly enjoyed those slides you showed the class today. You did? Sure. Boy, I saw the whole war of 1812 in a different light. That's fine. Now let's start. We'll take the exam orally. Sort of word of mouth. Yes. First question, what were the four phases of the revolution? The four phases? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's no date. <laughs> Fair, William. I know dates are your weak point, so I decided to make the exam more general without dates. <laughs> now, what were the four phases of the revolution? <laughs> 
Uh, uh, Jefferson went to Washington in 1801. <laughs> Couldn't that be one of the phases? It could not. One wrong. Who fathered the first tariff bill to pass the Senate? Who? Not when? You don't know that either? Miss Eggleston, it doesn't rhyme with anything. I beg your pardon. Well, I mean, is that the one that's $17.89 says? <laughs> Substitute, you can see the games for nothing. Gee whiz, what's so special about that? I mean, boy, have you ever sat on that bench, Homer? No. The sun's beating down on you all the time. You get sunburned. It's a hundred times more comfortable in the grandstand. Yeah. Besides, you're right out in public view where everybody can... Can... Can what? Listen, Homer, if I'd rather be a spectator, why should you worry? Oh, there you are, Henry. Hello, Father. Henry, your new glove just arrived Air Express. You might as well have it. But, Mr. Aldrich, Henry's turning in his uniform. Oh? Oh, I see. Homer, would you mind leaving for a moment? Leaving? I'd like to say something to Henry. And you feel it's none of my business? <laughs> I do. Sure. I'll save a seat for you in the grandstand here. Henry, may I ask why you're turning in your uniform? Well, since Willie's going to play shortstop... I see. So if you can't be top man, you're going to take your ball and go home. What? Henry, don't you know it's harder to fail than to win? Gee, I've never had any trouble. <laughs> Henry, in later life, Willie may have his letter for baseball, but you'll have the respect of the community, and that's much more important. It is? Aldrich, where have you been? Why aren't you in uniform? Oh, why, I... I was about to put it on. Well, hurry, you're starting at shortstop. But, uh, what? What? Willie Marshall didn't answer a single question correctly. Uh, but he couldn't have failed. I taught him everything I know. Well, he did. Miss Eggleston said he kept yelling, it doesn't rhyme, it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> I can't play. What, Henry? Do you realize the whole school will think I let Willie flunk on purpose? Henry, you're the only shortstop we've got left. But, Coach... Henry, stop arguing and get out there and play. But, Father, I'll lose the respect of the community. Henry, get out there and play! <laughs> of the coach to let Henry play right out there in the middle of the whole field. Alice, that's where the shortstop usually plays. Oh? Well, I think he's doing beautifully so far. Sure. There hasn't been a ball hit to him all game. <laughs> I still don't understand why all the young people boo every time he comes up to bat. Alice, it's a little hard to explain. <laughs> Still ahead. But their heavy slug is coming up, and if those two runners score, we'll lose. Strike him out, George. Strike him out. He couldn't hit the side of a barn door. Oh, boy. It's going right at Henry. Henry, get out of the way. Oh, another cold cloth for your head. No, thanks, Mother. And now that we're home and the excitement's all over, will somebody please explain clearly, once and for all, what happened? Alice, you saw it yourself. Henry saved the game. I know he did, but how? Oh, all I remember, Mother, is that the ball started to come right at me, see? And when I went, when I bent down to field it, the lights went out. <laughs> yeah, the ball hit you in the head. I know that. It's what happened afterwards I'm confused about. Alice, it's, it's simple. From Henry's head, the ball bounced straight over to the second baseman, and he threw it to first for a double play. Well, my goodness, I should think there'd be an easier way to make a double play. 
There is, Alice. Mother, when can I get out of bed? In a few days, dear, but Dr. Bennington doesn't think you should try to play any more this season. Anyway, not until the buzzing goes away. <laughs> oh, but the, the, the buzzing doesn't bother me, Mother. No? No. It sort of has a little tune to it. <laughs> Rigoletto? No. He is, but try to be quiet. Well, that's a good news for him. Henry Woolley told all the kids how Miss Eggleston double-crossed him, and they asked me to give you their official apology. No kidding. They forgive me? Sure. They're even sending you flowers. No kidding. Woolley's over at the undertaking parlor right now, making... Oh, well, what do you know? the swellest guy of the year. Well, gee whiz, Willie. Gee, thanks. And Henry, I'd like to make a deal with you. Uh, the undertaker says these straw flowers are everlasting. The straw flowers are? Yeah, so could I borrow them back to give to Miss Eggleston for Easter? <laughs> what a man, Willie. But here's my special tip for Easter. A surprise dessert for the kids made with Jell-O tapioca pudding. Just prepare one package of luscious, light, and creamy Jell-O vanilla tapioca as usual. When chilled, serve it in your best sherbet glasses, all dressed up with a garnish of bright colored jelly beans. And then top with a sprinkling of Baker's Coconut, tinted pink, green, and yellow for a special Easter Day flourish. <laughs> Try all three Jell-O tapioca puddings, Jell-O chocolate, vanilla, and orange coconut tapioca. They're ready prepared. All you do is add milk and cook for about five minutes. Jell-O tapioca puddings. Three delicious new reasons why more people buy Jell-O puddings than any other prepared puddings in the world. We're hoping you'll be in your living room in hours next week at the same time. Good night, folks. The Oldest Family, starring as the stone of Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer, is written by Norman Tokar and Ed Jurist with music by Jack Miller. Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich are House Jameson and Catherine Ross. And this is Dan Seymour in New York saying, The Aldrich Family is brought to you by the Jell-O Family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O Family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O Family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca pudding. Yes, Climbing a flagpole. Amazing, the only one of its kind. That's Minute Rice. Minute Rice for magically quick, quick meals. Here's delicious, white, fluffy rice that you don't have to wash, rinse, drain, or steam. It's even quicker to fix than potatoes. For all you do is drop Minute Rice in water and bring to a boil. Minute Rice can be the mainstay for all sorts of delicious, quick, quick meals. Try it. Remember the word Minute. Minute Rice in the red, white, and blue box. <laughs> George, look at Bill Goodwin. He's wearing knickers and a beanie. Gracie, you're looking at Henry Aldrich. This is the Aldrich family program. Well, sure, Gracie. I'm on your program, Burns and Allen. Next.